Here we go. Here goes nothing. Welcome to the journey. Cloud coins. I remember in 2011, 2013, Kendrick Lamar dropped Section 80. And whatever, whatever, can I get a verse? Of course, Kendrick was like, yeah, you can get a verse. Any verse for you, you got it. My first time meeting him, by the way, he's like, oh, cool, but you got to talk to Dave Free because Dave Free is going to be able to get your verse for you. You got to keep in contact with him. So I go over to Dave. Dave gives me his, his number and I get a voicemail. I was like, why didn't you give me your real number? It was a Google voice number I had to find out. The fucking voicemail said, don't worry. I'm like, all right, this is trash. He, fl he flaked on me. But I just realized that how excited I was in that moment to speak to him, somebody that was just in the industry, just got in. Fast forward, now that I have, I have a foot in, I want to be able to give that same experience to, you know, to people that like are, you know, were in my position at the time where they wanted to figure out how to do something or why to do something and didn't know how to. So I guess this is kind of just my, you know, paying for it of like what I felt like I was missing at the time and that's kind of what I want to do for, you know, everybody in the moment. So anyways, I'm Justice. We're at SIR, um, working with Summer Walker. She has a Jimmy Kimmel performance tomorrow. Steal my happiness, bro. I can't sing the song. Do you want me to do it right or not? I had a Philly hat on since the day I met him. I had a bald face. Why do y'all talking about beards? I'm not talking about beard. beard. I just want to talk to you about how Who I'm is to talking talk about, about That's what the vlog is about. That you can't type? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm sorry. We got carried away here. Yeah. All right, so we'll be back. We'll be back. Okay. <laughs> Why are you even caring to watch this, right? Um, I feel like I feel like the most important thing is finding what your why is. And for a lot of new artists, they always forget to answer that question, what's your why? Right? And when I say that, like I mean it by, you know, I run into an artist and the first thing they say to me is like, hey. Check out my, my SoundCloud link or whatever link it is that they give me. You know, like, there's 10 songs on there. It's like, oh yeah, you know, go to track five where you, you got my R&B track. Or go to like, track like one where it's my rock and roll track. And go to my like, my track six where it's a turn up track. And it's just like, okay, like I get that you're versatile and I get that you can do a lot of things, but why should I care? You know what I'm saying? Like, in any given moment, I can go to a studio right now and drop a 16 and I could be a rapper. I can just call myself a rapper, right? So the question is, why should I care? I feel like a lot of new artists always fail to answer that question. Why should I care? Um, and it's not because like there's something wrong with being versatile or something wrong with you know being able to do like so many different things at once. But what's wrong? What what the flaw is is not having like a continuity or a narrative and a reason for people to actually want to like dial in or just or, or just or just give a fuck about what you have going on and let me just break that down a little bit more you know in detail so for example you take a company like take a company like Nike right okay so right now I have I have Nike Cortez's on right and Nike makes a million different kinds of shoes right they make running shoes they make basketball shoes they started to cross over to lifestyle, they make soccer shoes, they make football shoes, you, you name it, whatever it is, they make it, right? But with this shoe, the marketing and the narrative behind this shoe is not going to be the same as the marketing and, and the narrative behind the fucking Jordan 1 Off-Whites, right? They know exactly who they're talking to, um, why they're talking to them, and why they should care. And let me break that down even in more depth, right? So their, so their core values um, align with who they're trying to sell the shoe to. So let me draw the parallel to a new artist. So I'm a new artist and the first question I ask myself, or I should ask myself, right, is who am I trying to talk to? Okay, so I'm trying to talk to the kids that have dreams and dream big and they believe that the world's against them, whatever, whatever. Cool. So now I've identified who, who, who I'm trying to talk to because Essentially, I'm not, it's not even like a reach. I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not because I'm literally talking to myself, right? So the question, the question is asked, 
the answer is there. So your core values need to align, right? So if you are now making a song or you're marketing, make sure that all those things have to do and align with a kid that's dreaming and a kid that has big aspirations or whatever, whatever. So like a great parallel was um, in 2000 and, you know, check my Google, it was 2012 when J. Cole dropped Friday Night Lights, right? The reason why that project and the reason why he would have fans for life is because that was like a diary and a guide for kids that were in college or in high school that felt like they didn't want to be there or felt like they were misunderstood or felt like nobody really could like relate to their dreams. And he drew the parallel to like, you know, a basketball player that had, you know, that I, I guess is trying to make the team, gets cut, was trying to just come back and just like be the best they can be. And that in itself, that theme and that narrative is what's so important that new artists always miss. Um, hold on, let me let me think of another parallel. I'll be back. Right now, we're just we're just in the age and in the, the generation where like everybody just wants to feel like they know you. Everybody wants to feel like they kind of just like own a piece of you, and that you know that transparency is going to be very important for a new artist. Um, and I'm not saying that like, okay, cool, like just go cry on the track. But, you know, but what I'm saying is that like, it needs to be known that like your fans or whoever you are trying to speak to knows your favorite color, knows your favorite kind of food, knows all those things because you're building a relationship. They're not fans, it's essentially like, they're just kind of it's like an extended family. Um, and these are all things that like, you know, like I kind of think about all the time, you know, when I'm talking to a new artist that like says, hey, like, you know, I want help with management or whatever, whatever. You know, a lot of the huge part of the artist development is making sure that we find their voice and, you know, whatever it is that they need to do that that can enhance that voice. You know what I'm saying? Just like making sure that it feels organic and making sure that it feels natural. You know, like for example, Black, when, um, when we were getting ready to put out the first project, Free Black, you know, he put together this like well he was about to put together this, this beautiful piece of work and you know first thing first thing i said was like yo like or first thing we said as a team was like yo um what what what, what is it that we're trying to do what's our purpose like what is our why right and we said we're going to talk talk about any and everything that you've been through that got you up to this point so the the term free black came from being free from you know his, his old label his past relationship you know, just like being in a situation where he felt like he was boxed in and, you know, that was kind of like, you know, the kind of parallel with, you know, being locked up and being in jail. But it was really more so like a mental thing, you know what I'm saying? And, and being able to like escape from that and made sure that everything aligned with that. So like made sure that we paid attention to, to, to the minuscule details to where like when we put up the website, you know, we had, um, we made sure that like Black wrote a letter to, you know, the people that were paying attention and that weren't even paying attention at the time that, hey, like this is what I'm going through. This is exactly how you know I'm trying to get out of it, and I'm just giving you this information. And those things kind of like are very important for building a core fan base because they remember that. You know, at the end of the day, essentially, you know, once you have a hit record or once you have a record that takes off, essentially, you have really like 15% of your fan base is really going to be loyal, as far as just like going to grow with you forever, and the other just like are passive listeners and just come in and out. And if you want to be able to, to be able to make sure that you're keeping them engaged, you always have to do things for them. And little details like that, like the letter, um, um, you know, just like even even for every track that we did, we made sure that we had album cuts. I know everybody talks about album cuts, but album cuts where it's just like, no, we're talking about the exact story. And a passive listener might not really give a fuck about that, honestly, but you know that you're doing certain things for your fans. Right, and the ones that are actually gonna grow with you and build with you. When am I gonna get my big break? How am I gonna get my big break? Who's gonna get my big break? The question is, just do the work yourself and everything else will follow. And I know that sounds cheesy to say, but it makes sense because if you understand your why and who you're talking to and you're able to like, all right, so a key word that we're gonna talk about is target marketing. And you're able to literally target who you're trying to speak to. Um, you're gonna find yourself building a base that you didn't even know was there, right? So, I'm talking about, about another artist like, for example, say Logic, right? A lot of people don't understand how he got there, you know? And, you know, for the most part, 
only him and his fans will really understand how he got there, right? But from the outside looking in, just my perspective on it is just that, okay, he's identified a certain group of people that have been neglected for so long, um, whether it be quote unquote, because I hate this word, but quote unquote nerds that love music, right? But nobody's speaking to them. Nobody's trying to associate themselves with them because it's not cool, right? But I love the generation that we're in because for me now, like, the new definition of cool is being yourself, right? And to be able to define what that means, right? Because all the artists that we love or that we deem as cool or as credible are just being themselves. And like the idea of credibility, I, I believe that in the future, that's like, not in the future, but even now, like that's gonna be redefined. You know, like I remember like 2012, 2013, where like, you know, if your shit didn't get on Pitchfork, or the fader or like complex or whatever it was just like oh i'm not credible or oh i'm not dope or whatever it's like nah like all that's just going to be redefined because you got to say all those things are coming from human opinion right so the people that are writing these blogs or these you know reviews or these like write-ups or whatever they're writing just about people that they're, that they're fascinated with right and the thing is now that there's direct to consumer and we don't need a middleman to be able to talk to who we would talk to, um, you can you can literally define what that looks like and what that feels like, what that smells like. Um, my my rule of thumb is, you know, I need to know what an artist smells like, tastes like, understands, or slash speaks like, um, what their message is, and exactly it, where, where wherever it is that they come from because that all adds to, this, to the whole point of a narrative, right? You can't tell the story without the rise and action, the climax, and and the setting and all those things. And if you're looking at like a book or like a trilogy or like a film, you know, you need to look at it exactly that way, market yourself exactly that way because you're talking to people that are trying to follow a story, trying to follow a narrative because things get boring and there's a million things that like is literally at our feet hundred miles an hour and if you're not able to tell the story into where it feels like a, 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 a progression or you know and then a regression and then like another another climax whatever it is if you're not able to just like to depict that visually sonically um, emotionally then it's just not really gonna connect you know um, I think that I think that in this day and age like you know the things that connect are the things that stick true Actually, no, scratch that, because even if you, if you even look at like the, the term industry plan, right? And I hate that term because it's like, you know, but there's some truth to it, right? Because the term industry plan is, you know, speaking from, yo, how did he get that? He just got on. I don't know nothing about him. He just got on, like, you know, whatever it is. Cool, I get it. Industry plan was really like started, in my opinion, from like a fucking, um, a fucking um, forum site called KTT, Kanye to the was a bunch of like angry rappers slash fans and spectators that like are just upset at like them their careers not being where they wanted to be and you know I get it but like the reason why like a lot of labels you know sign artists and say hey you know we're not gonna put the, we're not gonna put out that you're signed yet we're gonna make it look like it's independent is because it they've realized that it's a, it's about a narrative and that's what the kids care about the kids care about being able to relate to a narrative like if I'm on the street I'm Tyler Crate, I'm on Fairfax and I'm skating and then now I'm in a fucking arena I'm selling out shows as a fan I watched from when he was doing vlogs on YouTube to when he did Yonkers to when he fucking had his own festival and you know when he fucking directed his own commercial and whatever it is like I watched every single step and that has become important because it's about a narrative it's about having a story it's about having something for people to cling to um, and that again all ties into the why ask yourself why is it you're doing what you're doing and why is it that I should give a fuck because in reality nobody gives a fuck so make me care make somebody else care and I feel like once you answer that question it becomes a bit easier that you you're able to navigate you're able to know exactly who you're talking to you're able to like have a clearer idea of the songs you're gonna make or whatever content you're making whatever it is you know there's just gonna be so many different different things to pull from and um yeah and i feel like once you figure that out like you know 
navigating the industry is going to come a lot easier.